In this video, we are going to discuss how to find the maximum number of electrons uh, given certain quantum numbers. So let's start with the first case. n can never be 0. If n is 1, you can have a maximum of 2 electrons. When n is 2, there's two sublevels, the s sublevel and the p sublevel. And therefore, you can have a maximum of 8 electrons. When n is 3, there are three sublevels, 3s2, 3p6. The d sublevel can hold a maximum of 10, giving you a total of 18 electrons. In the fourth energy level, you have four sublevels, 4s2, 4p6, 4d10, and 4f14. So this gives you a total of 32 electrons. And in the fifth energy level, there are five sublevels, 5s2, 5p6, 5d10, 5f14, and the next one is g, which is going to have 18. Notice that the electrons, they continue to add by 4. This gives you a total of 50 electrons. Now, there's an equation that can help you find the, number, the maximum number of electrons uh, in any energy level. It's 2n squared. So, for example, when n is 1, it's going to be 2 times 1 squared, which is 2. When n is 2, it's 2 times 2 squared, you get 8. When n is 3, you know, 3 squared is 9 times 2, that's 18. For 4, 4 squared is 16, you double it, you get 32. 5 squared is 25 times 2, you get 50. So that's how you can find the maximum number of electrons in any energy level. Now let's consider the second case. Let's say if you're given the value of n and the value of ms. Whenever you're given the value of ms, it's simply half of the previous quantum numbers. In the third energy level, we know that there is a maximum number of 2n squared electrons, which is 18 electrons. Half of the 18 will have an electron spin of plus 1 half, and then the other 9 will have a spin of minus 1 half. So the answer is half of 18, it's 9 electrons that will have these two quantum numbers. That's the second case. So just for another example, let's say if n is 10 and ms is negative 1 half. We know, based on the equation 2n squared, that you have a maximum of 200 electrons in the 10th energy level. However, half of those will have a spin of negative 1 half, so the answer will be 100. The third case is when they give you the value of n and l. Let's say n is 3 and l is 2. For s, you need to know that l is 0. For the p sublevel, l is 1. For d, l is 2. For f, um, l is 3. So what this means is that when n is 3 and l is 2, we have the 3d um, sublevel. And in the 3d sublevel, you can have a maximum of 10 electrons. So the answer is 10. For the sake of practice, let's say if n is 4 and l is 3. This correlates to the 4f sublevel, and the f sublevel can have a maximum of 14. Let's say if n is 2, l is 2. Now, this is impossible. l has to be less than or equal to n minus 1. So when n is 2, l can be 0 or 1. It can't be 2. So for if you have quantum numbers that are not allowed, the answer is 0. Let's say if n is 3 and L is 1. This correlates to the 3p sublevel, right? And there are 6 electrons in the, in the p level, so there are 6 electrons that can have these, those two quantum numbers. Now let's look at the next case. Let's say if you're given the value of n and ml. What is the maximum number of electrons that can have those two quantum numbers? Well, let's make a list of all the sublevels in the fourth energy level. We have 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. There are four sublevels in the fourth energy level. We're going to list the values of L and ML. For s, we know that L is 0. It's 1 for p, 2 for d, 3 for f. When L is 0, ML has to be 0. When L is 1, ML can vary between negative 1 and 1. Likewise, when L is 2, it can vary between negative 2 and 2. 
So ML can only be between the range of negative L and L. Now, each of these sublevels has an N value of 4. However, only some of them have an ML value of 1. And that's these numbers here. The ML values corresponds, it identifies the orbital within the sublevel. The 4 sublevel has 1 orbital. The 4P sublevel has 3, 4D has 5, and F has uh, 7. And each of these numbers corresponds to that. In every orbital, you can have a maximum of 2 electrons. So therefore, there are 6 electrons that has these two numbers. So the answer is 6. Let's try another example for the sake of practice. Let's say if um, n is 5 and l is 3. So for the fifth energy level, we have five sublevels, 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, and 5g. And these are the values of l that corresponds to those sublevels and the values of ml. Now we need to know which of these, all of these sublevels are part of the fifth energy level, but not all of them have an L value of 3. Only these two. And every orbital can hold two electrons, so therefore there is a total of four electrons that have those two um, quantum numbers. Actually, this is not supposed to be L. This is supposed to be ML, um, which has a value of 3. And there are four electrons that have that. If n was 5 and l was 3, then this would be the 5f orbital, which can have 14 electrons. But I meant to put ml in there. All right, the next case. Let's say if we have if n is 3, l is 2, and ml is 1. Well, this part corresponds to the 3d sublevel. And D has five orbitals. Because L is two, it can these numbers can vary between negative two and two. And we're focused on the orbital that has a value of zero. There are two electrons in that orbital. So whenever you have these three quantum numbers, um, the answer is always going to be two. Because we're specifying a specific orbital. Now Let's say if it's not allowed, for example, let's say if n is 3, l is 1, and ml is 2. Do you see the error with this, uh, these quantum numbers? ml can never exceed l. If l is 1, ml has to be between negative 1 and 1. So when you have quantum numbers that are not allowed, the answer is 0. If it's allowed, it's going to be 2. So now let's go over the next case. Let's say if n is 4, L is 3, ML is 1, MS is minus a half. So we know that we have the 4F sublevel, which has um, 7 orbitals. And we're focused on the orbital that has a value of 1 for ML. Now, there are two electrons in this orbital, but only one of them has a spin of minus a half. Therefore, when you have all four quantum numbers, the answer is always one electron if those quantum numbers are allowed. If it's not allowed, then it's zero. This is based on Pauli's exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. These quantum numbers, they identify a specific electron. They are part of an identification system. Let's try another example. Let's say if um, n is 3, l is 2, and ms is negative a half. Whenever you have the value of ms, look at the previous two. It's simply half of that. When n is 3 and l is 2, we know we have the 3d sublevel, which can have a maximum of 10. Therefore, half of those 10 electrons will have 
a spin of minus a half, the, the other five electrons will have a spin of plus one half. So the answer is five. It's half of what this number is. Now let's consider our final case. Let's say if um, n is 4, ml is 0, and the electron spin is plus a half. So because we're given the electron spin, we know that the maximum number of electrons that will have these three, th those three quantum numbers will be half of the maximum number of electrons that have those two quantum numbers. So in the fourth energy level, we have 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. The L values are 0, 1, 2, and 3. And the ML values are these numbers. Okay. So each of these sublevels has an ML value of 0. So that means there are eight electrons that has these two quantum numbers. However, half of those eight will have all three quantum numbers. So the answer for this problem is there are four maximum electrons um, that can have an n value of four, an mo value of zero, and a spin of plus one half. So hopefully you find this video to be helpful whenever you need to um, calculate the maximum number of electrons that has, you know, uh, certain quantum numbers.